This is my. I will now call. <laughs> me. <laughs> to order, and I would like to ask everybody to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Right behind you, Jesse. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to ask Mayor Steve Hofbauer to come forward and administer the oath of office to our newly appointed Planning Commissioner, Christina fraga -Sains. Thank you, Chair, and greetings. All right, you ready? Ready. Have you rehearsed this at all? No. No? All right. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll try to be gentle with it because it's the, a lawyer wrote it, so. <laughs> okay, raise your hand. I state your name. I, Christina fraga -Sains. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. And without any mental reservation. And without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I am about to enter. Of which I was about to enter. Really good all the way up to the end. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's come and now we welcome us, welcome join us up here. There you go. Thank you. And uh, she gets that, she'll get you a copy. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Mayor. Chair, sure, thank you very much. Sure. Have a good evening. Good evening. <laughs> you made it through the tough part. Okay. All right. And now that you are seated up here, we can move on to item four, roll call. Chair Namath. Here. Vice Chair Avery. Here. Commissioner Fodasane. Here. Commissioner Henderson. Yeah. Commissioner Smith. Here. Wonderful. We are all present, even though we appear to be hiding from each of you. <laughs> um, that will bring us to item five. Ms. Saxton, a review of the agenda. Uh, yes. So um, all of the commissioners should have quite a hefty packet in front of you. This is all information that you have received from the applicant uh, via email as well. Per um, our consistent standards, we have provided it to you on the dais as we typically do for all of our applications. So you have everything that has been submitted electronically on the dais tonight. All right. Thank you very much. Item six on our agenda is a motion to waive the full reading of all resolutions. May I get a motion, please? So moved. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Thank you. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? All right. The motion carries. Thank you. That brings us to public comments on our consent calendar items and any items not on our agenda. The public was asked to submit their comments via the new e-comment um, process on our website. So did we receive any comments for this meeting? We did not. Okay. Thank you very much. And that brings us to our consent calendar, which consists of the approval of our meetings from our last regular Planning Commission meeting of April 9th. May I get a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. The minutes are passed. Thank you. 
That brings us to our first public hearing item. And just so everybody knows, during our public hearings, we're going to invite the two, if there are two people, up to two people for each item into the room um, during the presentation point. So item 9A, door boy. <laughs> As we wait for the two uh, members of the applicant to come in, um, I will just let the planning commissioners know that uh, senior planner Megan Taggart will present on this item. All right, welcome. We're really way cuter than this, but we're not gonna let you see how cute we are. Um, all right, starting with item 9A, Ms. Taggart. Thank you, good evening. Before you this evening is a request for an appeal regarding allowable uses within a specific plan. Please note that this item only relates to the appeal of an interpretation made by staff uh, regarding the allowable uses within the specific plan and not to a specific business that is that would be a separate application. The proposed use consists of an automotive auctions uh, with salvage and salvage services and storage including processing and selling of both operable and inoperable vehicles. The use is proposed on property located within the Antelope Valley Business Park specific plan. The specific plan is located on the southeast corner of Columbia Way and 10th Street West. The specific plan was designed to accommodate commercial uses at the corner of Columbia Way and 10th Street West, with business park uses extending uh, both along Columbia Way and 10th Street West and industrial uses located behind the commercial and business park developments. The specific plan allows some automotive uses, such as automotive fleet storage and automotive repair, but it does not specifically allow wrecking or salvage yards or auctions. In addition, general wholesale storage and distribution are permitted within the industrial zone and light wholesale storage and distribution are permitted within an enclosed bu building within the business park zone. The specific plan grants authority to the director or his designee to interpret uses within the specific plan. Typically the director, in this case, the director of economic and community development, designates the planning manager as a designee. Uh, as such, an interpretation was made by the deputy director acting as the planning manager that the auto salvage auction use is not permitted use within the specific plan. The specific plan also states that if any person is aggrieved by an interpretation, they may appeal that decision to the planning commission. And therefore the appellants are asking that the interpretation be overturned and that the proposed use be permitted. The deputy director made the determination that the auto salvage auction use is not a permitted use within the specific plan because the use is not specifically listed within the matrix of permitted uses, and the use is not similar to other uses that are within the matrix of permitted uses within the specific plan. In order to determine if this use would be allowable in other locations outside of the specific plan, staff did some research for other zones and determined that the use would be allowed within the M2 zone, which is generally located northwest and south of plant 42, which is away from commercial and residential areas. Uh, with that, you have several options for this item. The first would be to adopt the draft resolution upholding the Deputy Director of Economic and Community Development's in, um, interpretation, which would deny the appeal. The second would be to continue the item, and the third would be to approve the appeal, which would overturn the Deputy <coughs> Director's interpretation. And that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Do any of the commissioners have technical questions for staff at this time? Okay, then at this time, I would like to open the public hearing on this item. I'd like to start with asking Ms. Saxton if we received any e-comments on this. We have not. Okay, thank you very much. Then I would like to ask, I know the applicant is here, so if you have some comments to make, please come forward. You will have three minutes. There will be a timer up there. We received is my favorite word, a plethora of information via email. Um, and I did confer, people have read them, they've seen them. We also have a large packet up here of information. So um, you have three minutes to speak on this. Um, I recommend you speak to the 
uh, actual portion that we're voting on this evening. Thank you. Um, hold that for a second. When this is done, I need to get the attorney. He had back surgery, so I thought it. Perfect. They told me to do it by phone, and my time is disappearing. So, uh, my name is Gary Bertain. Uh, I'm representing our partnership here on the appeal number 20 001, uh, the proposed um, auto auction, as you guys call it. Um, we, were, we met with the previous city manager, Jim Purdy, the head of community development and stuff before we started this project, and they said we had an acceptable use, and uh, that is addressed. That, that meeting didn't occur. We had a one-stop meeting back in November, and we could prove it if we had to, okay? The second part of it is about the language that's used here in the form of salvage and... Um, scrap and wholesale and stuff. Insurance Auto Auction is a multinational company. They're a multi-billion dollar company wherever their hubs go. There's only two players in all of North America and England and around the world. And wherever they go, they bring jobs and they bring a lot of business. They work for the insurance carriers, the insurance companies. They do not own the vehicles. They are just like a logistics center. Stuff comes in under the California State Insurance Code. Things have to be handled in a neutral and independent way, they're processed, titles are cleared, they're sold, and they go out. The reason there's an auction is they have to be purchased by a neutral third party. So that entire process is just the process. Wherever they're at, they bring jobs, lots of jobs locally, and they bring a lot of property tax, but they also bring um, a lot of fuel tax, a lot of effort goes into that. The other part of the statement that was a bit troubling was that, um, well, we had the meeting, and then in the, in the actual document, they said that our property abutted, that we wanted to use for this tenant, abutted the main roads. It doesn't abut the main roads. It's back in the industrial zone, and I provided a, a picture of our Gardena project, when you're on the street, you don't see any of this. This goes on around hospitals, hotels, all other kinds of operations. So this brings, brings a lot of work, economy. Um, I believe that our attorneys attached our research of the specific plan and the amount of fluidity there is in it to use. In our first meeting, it was agreed that no one would ever see us, no one would ever see us inside of this, and until the airport's approved or anything's done like that, this is going to bring much needed jobs and income to the city. It is a lease. Someday it will sunset. Thank you very much. Your time allotment is up. I appreciate all of that. Is your attorney, are you going to have them on your phone? How, are we, how do we? Yeah. Yeah. Like, they told me to hold it up. Yeah, hold that up. Yeah, we're high tech, okay. <laughs> and what is your attorney's name? Sam Broyles. Sam Broyles, okay. Yes, we did get contact information. I think I'm going to have to put him on the speakerphone. Hey, Gary. Okay, Sam, I'm here, and they know your name, so I'm going to hold you up to the speaker, and... Then you can begin. Go. <laughs> Go. Yep. Hi, commissioners. Good evening. My name is Samuel G. Burles, Jr. I'm a practicing California attorney for the last 30 years. I'm here in support of appeal number 20-001. I've submitted a written response to the staff report, but I highlight a few points. The report goes to great length to cover the project in a negative light by invoking the PMC to find terms of salvage and wrecking yard that do not apply to this project or its use. The deputy director provided a new interpretation of the plan and allowable zoning uses so that the IAA project would no longer be allowed. The information that has been provided to the commission is substantial evidence that the IAA use meets the requirements of the plan. The usage proposed, the usage proposed by IAA has not changed. The zoning requirements have not changed. The only change that has occurred is the political team now overseeing the development of the business park and the application of its zoning requirements. 
The issues of sales tax or tax revenues or the amount of revenue in any regard is specifically stated by the specific plan to be of secondary concern. I direct your attention to fiscal impact report at page I, executive summary and page 2-10. The emphasis not on not the emphasis not on significant tax retail sales and sales tax, but rather on how those uses generate employment opportunities over time when completely built out. In this case, 5,400 new jobs. The abrupt change in allowable uses and IIA's use as one of those allowable uses leads an objective observer to conclude that the change is being arbitrarily unreasonable and can be considered an abuse of discretion. The IAA process comes, causes vehicles to be warehoused, temporarily stored, inspected, clean tiles prepared, and auctioned to third parties. IAA does not salvage or run a wrecking yard, as those terms are defined at the PMC. The, C, the Planning Commission's factual determination that the IAA is not permitted, excuse me, the city's factual conclusion that the IAA use is not permitted is contrary to the weight of evidence and is not supported by substantial evidence in light of the whole record before this commission. The flexibility of the plan was intentionally left out of the report. And instead, the report attempts to imply that the IAA use is out of a salvage yard and a wrecking yard. This is obviously not the use that IAA intends, nor the process that IAA uses to process titles and vehicles under its jurisdiction. The analysis also fails to direct the Planning Commission to Table 2 of the plan at page 16 that provides for wholesale storage and distribution. This use is directly on point to the use that encompasses the physical operations that IAA will perform in conjunction with its other title operations. One can only conclude that the planners do not understand or chose to ignore the true scope of the use of the IAA project. Is respectfully submitted that the appeal be granted to allow the IAA project to proceed, and at, or at the minimum, in the alternative, that the Planning Commission allow a substantial amount of additional time for study of the relevant use and any clarification of IAA's use, as it is directly opposite to the use claimed by the staff report. I thank you for your consideration and your time, and allow me to appear by telephone at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Broyles. Thanks, Sam. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here to speak on this item? All right, then at this time, I would like to close the public hearing. As long as there's no opposition to that. All right, the public hearing on this item is now closed. That brings us to commissioner discussion on this item. It's going to be very difficult talking with this mask. <laughs> um, Commissioner Smith, I just want to say before we de begin to engage in discussion that uh, I received a call from, I believe it was Mr. Ben Sayani, a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, asking me to discuss this matter with him. I had the opportunity to actually speak with him along with Sam Broyles and Gary Bertain. Um, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday. Um, and they shared with me what their concerns were. And I accepted them and received them in the spirit in which they offered them and just wanted to disclose that to the commission at this point. Made no decision or anything, but just wanted to at least hear them out. Thank you so, very much. Thank you. All right. Does everybody understand what it is that is before us today? I know yeah, you received an awful lot of information. Yeah, did they? Now, there's a big red square here. Do we have a, an artist rendering of um, that? Of what a product, a finished product would have looked like? That is. <clears throat> Here's a proposed use placed? On, the, on your screen. Um, this property um, has always been, um, as far as I've understood, like one of our last marquee properties because when you come up the freeway and you get off the freeway, this is gonna be kind of one of our gateways to the city. It's right on the edge of our city. And um, because we have the courthouse there, which is a marquee building, um, the, the options I've seen proposed before have been you know, some pretty nice uh, projects that looked really nice. 
when I see, you know, um, auto salvage, I think of visual blight. You know, a bunch of cars sitting around getting ready to be wholesaled off. So um, I think that 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 use sounds like a great use for the city, a good benefit to the city. But I think they're about a mile off the mark. I think if we if they took that use and moved it to the other side of Sierra Highway, it would be wonderful. But I think this particular location, this is a premium location for our city. And um, I was always under the impression that they were saving this for something special, like a beautiful, you know, a beautiful business park that looks really nice. Or I had heard somebody talking about putting like Independence Hall over there or something really marquee. But when I think about, you know, salvage cars or cars that are broken down or cars that are, you know, maybe the insurance company um, paid a claim because it was stolen or it was total or whatever and coming here it just it doesn't seem like something that we want to be in our marquee location of the city so um anyways um now they were saying that this parcel is broken up into um different uses um yeah so that where this part parcel of it will be industrial by, that's yeah that's not going to be seen but if this is the first project that goes in that's all you're going to see is a salvage yard you know, or whatever you want to call it, whatever the correct term is it, but for cars that are, you know, some sort of distress. And um, it doesn't seem like it fits into what the vision I would expect to be in this. This is a very premium location. I think, you know, whoever ever owns this land and is going to develop it, it can be something spectacular. Um, and it's a beautiful location to put something spectacular, but auto salvage is just something I don't think is compatible with that particular location. Okay, thank you very much. So, what we are deciding this evening is if we are going to uphold the denial uphold the deputy director's interpretation that basically salvage and automotive um, auction use is not permitted in this zone. So that, that is what our decision is in, I'm sorry, in this business specific plan. That is what our decision is this evening. So it's, it's we have an awful lot of information in front of us about other portions of this and, and um, but the, the important part is to determine <clears throat> if you support the interpretation or do not, I guess is putting it in a nutshell. Is Madam, that correct? Madam Chair, yeah, if I, if I may just, just clarify. It's a, it's a pretty simple decision. What you're deciding is whether the use that they're proposing fits within one of the categories of approved land uses in the specific plan. And what I'm hearing from the from the attorney is that it's their opinion that the use as proposed fits in with the general wholesale storage and distribution mm -hmm. use, which is on page 18 of the specific plan. Right. So the question is, is whether or not that use fits within that allowable land use under the specific plan or any other land use in the specific land. That's really the only question. I think what is, as the attorney said, and as, as I read through this, there is a little bit of leeway. Activities typically include, but are not limited to, blah, 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 blah. So I think that's where it comes in. Um, I actually do have a question for you. If you could please come to the microphone and explain to me. In in our documentation on page 10 of what we received, it has your verbiage from the lessee's verbiage on their actual business. Yes. And it says, providing automotive and specialty salvage services, which includes processing and selling, operable, inoperable, total loss, blah, blah, blah. Warehousing, storing, inspecting, auctioning, and selling. Um, plus office use. So 
Can you give me, in a very brief nutshell, what are salvage services that would so be performed? Salvage is an insurance word. In this case, it's not a it's not an operation. When your car is wrecked, they and they pay you. The title by the state of California says it's salvage. Correct. It's a salvage title. Their operation is to their hub is to process these cars. So when and, you say specialty salvage services. That is not a physical, big, giant wrecking ball crash. There's no wrecking. Okay. There's no pick aparts. There's no and used car sales. And when you say auctioning, is that um, include that's that's what's taking place inside? Okay, and that's also a California law. You gotta do a third party neutral buyer. Okay. Otherwise, there's collusion. So there's it's very controlled. It's behind fences. Is it um, to the public or is it just to other car dealers? Uh, it's it's a wholesale operation by California law. The public can buy a license. Uh, wholesalers they don't they don't pay tax. There's other ways that money's made. Uh, the public itself has to take their titles and process their titles and pay the tax when they get the bill of sale. So is this some place that? There would be a vision of um, a big lot, and every I was going to point at the picture. Tuesday, <laughs> there's a big auction, and everybody comes, and there's a bunch of streamers and banners, and you know, come okay. to the auction and Can buy I the cars. Point? Pardon? That's a good picture. Can I go point? Sure. Okay. Right. So this Gardena facility, you have a, a hospital, you have the business building. This landscaping and stuff you see around there, almost all um, industrial zones have to be completely screened. That was discussed at our first meeting back in November. You don't see them. They're just screened in. And after this, this is the Gardena facility. After it was built, they built homes across the street. They built uh, a hotel next to it. They built a business office next to that. So it doesn't, this is not going to be there forever. But it's also in the overflight zone. We have facilities where planes have crashed. All right, thank you very much. All of that information right. we've already read. Right. Thank you. Okay. In reading Ms. Saxton's um, interpretation, basically it says the auto auction use is not permitted within the industrial zone. And I know that there was some discussion as to where the industrial zone butts up against the other zone. Is the business park zone and the commercial zone. So I put the, um, up on the screen right now right. is the um, land use table from the specific plan. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, none of those streets are in place, so you get a general idea of um, where the different zones are. Right, and we're trying to, the, the current idea was to put the auto auction into the industrial zone, and, and it's not a... Thank you. Sorry, technical difficulty. Can I just add a couple of comments to this? Uh -huh. um, so I understand um, after reading the documents, and there's a lot of them here. Um, exactly what we're asked to do tonight, and I really wanted to just take real deep uh, concern about um, the folks who appealed this, because I read the letter very carefully and very detailed. And as I understand it, the, when I read the major uh, appeal letter, um, one of the concerns, at least one of the major concerns, is that um, the former manager, former city manager, agreed to uh, work with you and apparently was acceptable to the idea and in talking to you uh, you guys yesterday and also reading the document uh, that seems to be a real concern 
in terms of why you really believe you should be moving forward with this. And I certainly understand that. I certainly respect your opinion of that. But I think it's perfectly within new management, new leadership, that if they make a different interpretation of something that a previous management made, they're within that right to do that. And if it makes sense and it's in alignment with uh, what the law is and what the rule is. So that's what I was really looking at. I understand exactly where you're coming from, but I do see that that, and I think as the chair indicated, there's some flexibility there. Um, I am glad that you clarified that it's not technically a salvage area. So I, I, I do hear where you're coming from with that. But um, I think the city was just within its discretion to decide that this does not fall within this particular zone area and that there's an alternative to do it as well. And I know that uh, apparently a significant amount of money has been um, allocated to this. And I guess I wanted to ask you also the taxes. If, if cars are going to be sold in that, in that lot area, would the taxes be, uh, would, would those taxes come to the city and generate revenue for the city? Or do those taxes, taxes go outside the city? A portion would come to the city for the license to be able to exist. So just a portion. If they buy a license and register with the state, then if they buy something, they go to wholesalers, you know. Okay. Any wholesaler, any wholesale business is going to have to. Okay. Thank you. I just need a little clarity in that. Thank you. Any other comments or thoughts on this item? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll I've drop got in. Questions for staff. Okay. Um, so there's a remedy to this if they file it for a uh, new specific plan. Is that correct? Correct. Or an amendment. Or, or I mean, an amendment to the existing. I, you know, it's it's funny. Sorry, I'm pulling this up a little bit so you guys can hear me. Um, because we're so used to being up here making decisions on things like this, like time extensions, you know, where things aren't going to happen for 10 years. I don't know if, seems like maybe time is of the essence for these gentlemen because I've seen these flurries of memos and letters going back and forth quite a few, you know, this year. Um, I would love to see in writing, I mean, I go to a lot of meetings um, where many, many things are discussed. And a lot of times we'll say like, yeah, that's, that's a good idea, you know, and, but we kind of generalize and don't say like everything, single thing that was mentioned, like on the airport commission, for example, uh, we talk about, you know, maybe free parking. Okay. That's a good idea. But when it comes right down to it, um, you know, it, where, where's, where was this all laid out before? For why, why are we just seeing this now? I guess is, is one thing I have a question about. Um, and it is, I'm glad to hear that there could be a remedy for these, for this uh, organization to get this changed. But I mean, my, my tendency is to um, believe that the city, that the city staff here knows a lot more about the planning laws than I do. And uh, you know, if there was something at, at one of these meetings that specifically talked about auctions and about um, some of these other things that were brought up by uh, Commissioner Henderson, um, I'd sure love to see him, but it sounds like it was just kind of verbal stuff that was going on at, multiple meetings. Is that correct? That's correct. So there um, there was a formal meeting, I believe it was in January-ish, where there was a pre-application filed. Um, so at that time there was a letter memorializing the comments for that meeting. Um, after that meeting, the <clears throat> applicant submitted a zone verification letter. Um, and at that time, they received the letter from staff indicating that the use was not allowable in the specific plan. And then pursuant to the regulations in the specific plan, they followed the appeal. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Yeah, I have been looking through this and trying to find a way to fit the auto option portion, which is what's under discussion here, into any of these activities include but not are not limited to. And I do believe that um, uh, Commissioner Avery has a good idea because somewhere in our documentation we did see that there is an option for the applicant to do a uh, specific plan amendment. And perhaps if that if that's a 
another legal and doable option for this, that then it would all fit in. Because I understand this was done in 1992 and things do change and it was fluid and flexible. But in my head, I can't find a way to fit that auto option in here in the industrial section just yet. So I would hope that perhaps if we could come up with a, an amendment to the specific plan, that would fit the requirements. Any other comments, concerns, questions? No, I'm good. Then would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number PC 2020 20, attachment one, upholding the Deputy Director of Economic and Community Development Interpretation. Denying the appeal APP 20 001 and finding the appeal is not subject to the California Environmental Quality Act sequel. Second. And let's use our thank you for letting him read that. Now, can we use the touch screen? <laughs> no, he needed that up there for verbiage, I think. Oh, I was reading the paper. And you were reading it there. <laughs> All right, I have a motion from Commissioner Henderson and a second from Commissioner Smith. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, then we shall call for the question. Let the record show that the motion passes with five yes votes. So thank you very much. And I hope that you can file an amendment. And that will bring us to item 9B. And that will let Megan get the heck out of here, huh? Thank you very much. Have a good evening. <laughs> yes, and I believe our next planner, Skip, as well as the applicant, are waiting outside. Locked outside. So. Yes. yes. get his glasses on so they can get fogged up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That just makes all of this so much more fun. <laughs> okay. Welcome, Skip. Oh, thank you so much. Happy to see you, all of you. Good evening again, everyone. Okay. The applicant has submitted a request to establish a Type 41 on sale beer and wine alcoholic beverage control license for a bona fide restaurant located within, existing, within an existing tenant space at 40117 10th Street West Suite A. And that's as shown in the yellow box on the screen. The site plan shows the existing shopping center, which is called Timless Plaza, which is located in the C3 General Commercial Zone. Uh, Kaze Sushi Restaurant is located in the building that is centrally located within the shopping center and it occupies Suite A. And shown here is the project site. Uh, the restaurant is approximately 1,712 square feet with 42 seats, and there is no dance floor or nightclub. 
And here's the south elevation of Kaze Sushi Restaurant, which is the main entrance. And the floor plan of the restaurant includes the storage of alcohol, and as shown above, uh, where A represents approximately 10 square feet of the storage area, uh, and B represents approximately 10.83 square feet of the kitchen area. The total storage of alcohol at the restaurant is less than 10% of the 1,712 uh, square feet floor plan, the square foot floor plan. Um, in addition to alcohol storage, the applicant is proposing to operate the restaurant Monday, on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 11.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. On Friday and Saturday, the operating hours are from 11.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Sunday, the hours of operation are 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. And the restaurant will be closed on Tuesdays. And these hours of operation are consistent with the hours established by the ABC for the sale of alcoholic beverages from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. And uh, on the next slide here, um, per the Palmdale Municipal Code, the Planning Commission may consider over-intensification, high crime, the surrounding area, and hours of operation to determine if the CEP should be approved. So starting with over-intensification, the two methods to determine over-intensification of on-sale alcoholic beverage licenses are population density and retail density. And according to both of these methods, the project site will not contribute to an over-intensification. And then in regards to high crime area, the project site is within a crime reporting district, uh, CRD uh, 2619, and it exhibits low crime in developed portions of the city. And the uh, bona fide restaurant meets the location standards requirements specified within the Palmdale Municipal Code because there are no adult-oriented businesses within 1,000 feet of the Kaze Sushi restaurant. And also, the hours of operation are consistent with the hours established by the ABC for the sale of alcoholic beverages from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. And here are the options. Um, so in conclusion, the three options for the Planning Commission are to approve, continue, or deny the project, and option one is recommended. And that concludes my presentation, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. You're welcome. Do any of the commissioners have technical questions for staff at this time? Okay. Then I would like to open the public hearing at this time. Ms. Saxon, did we receive any e-comments? We did not. It was awful quiet, huh? Hmm. I should have sent one just to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then our applicant is here. Could I please ask you to come forward to the podium? Hi there, what is your name? Oh, my name is Ji Yan Li. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Li. Um, I just want to confirm that you have read and understand the conditions in the conditional use permit. Yes. And you can follow them, including the training for alcohol serving and all of the um, different um, conditions that are included in that. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions for the applicant? I do. So are you for cer certain that you're never going to open on Tuesdays? Yeah. No, <laughs> 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 You, you will never open on Tuesdays? Yeah, we are going to take one day off every week. Right now, because of the COVID-19, we change our close day to Monday. So instead of Tuesday, now we close on Monday, but we are not planning to open one more day. But, but maybe, maybe say a year from now, you might be open seven days a week? Yeah. Or they might be closed on a different day. We'll, we'll sure. one day. Yeah, we, we are okay. always close uh, The reason I bring that up is just because... Um, Make sure it's not in the conditions. Yeah, so 
I believe it's conditioned for only every day except for Tuesday. Is that correct, staff? I don't see it on the conditions. Oh, and that would exclude so them you, from the possibility. So if they were to open, when it open on Tuesdays, they'd have to come back to us again. It's that's, not in the conditions. I think that's just in our. Oh okay. Well, yes, okay. there's an actual condition. I, you can just from personal experience, I learned my lesson on asking for more than you need sometimes, but. I think in the conditions it, it just addresses that their um, proposed hours are um, yeah, four times not actually a condition. Good point. Yeah, that um, it is not within the conditions of approval. It was just within the discussion of the staff report, but it is a great point. Um, but yes, the hours of operation were not part of the conditions of approval. Oh wait, oh, oh they're part of the resolution though. I'm sorry, they are. They're on page eighteen of the resolution. Page three of the resolution, page 18 of the application. We just want to make sure that you're not locking yourself in. If it says specifically you're closed on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. we would rather leave that open and they, you know, if you're closed one day a week is fine. Yes. But if it specifically stated that you were closed on Tuesdays, yes. then you'd be beholden to that for eternity. And okay. we don't, that, that's what Commissioner Avery is suggesting. Okay, then I'm going to change it Close to one, one day a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, no, city attorney, can you clarify? Can we just uh, have the planning commissioners amend the resolution and then approve it as amended if they so choose? Uh, yes, we can do that. I'm, I'm trying to figure out specifically what condition is problematic. It's, it's, it's not in the resolution. It's, yeah, Oops, sure. sorry. We are already saying it's Tuesday in here that she's off, but she's saying it's going to be Monday, right? Yes, after right. COVID-19. No, it's on page 17 of, of section okay. 90. 17 and, I'm sorry, 18. Mm -hmm. it? Okay. 18. Yeah. It's within D of the resolution. And F. And F. Um, yeah, I, I think you can make a motion to approve the resolution but striking the sentence that says that the restaurant will be closed on Tuesdays. I like that. <laughs> it's simple. Simple. Thing. Thank you for knowing how to phrase it. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> May I address the applicant again? Yes. So I, you, I just want to make sure you know, you, you know, you kind of seem confused here. We're not telling you you have to be open on Tuesdays, but if later on you decide to be open on Tuesdays, mm -hmm. You want to be able to sell beer and wine on Tuesdays. So that's what this is for. Oh, okay. It's giving you the option to have your discretion to decide whatever day you want to be closed. Oh, okay. Sometimes we're <laughs> sometimes we're, we're here to help. So <laughs> this is one of them. We just look scary, I'm telling you. We're not. <laughs> that's a, I, I appreciate. And um, Commissioner Avery has a business oh, yes. in a neighboring city, mm -hmm. but he does understand how, how important it is. Yes from the beginning to get your hours mm -hmm. pretty wide so that you can flex yourself as life changes. So, okay. Any other questions for the applicant? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else here to speak on this item? Seeing none, I shall close the public hearing if there is no objection. All right, the public hearing on this item is now closed. Any commissioner discussion? All right, if I would like to say thank you, Mr. Avery. For yes, that was a very good Your catch. brilliance and your mm -hmm. insight mm -hmm. well, just, and your vast knowledge. I'd just like to say too, um, I, I love it when I see um, a business that's not asking to stay open until two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. selling alcohol, because that, that does not make sense to me, but um, anyway, yeah. So I will, I will point out that condition 14 on stamp page 24, um, that does restrict the sale of alcoholic beverages um, after the hours after of 12 p.m. Yeah. So even if they decided to be open later or more days or whatever, they could they could sell alcohol any day of the week until up 10. until 10 p.m. Oh, okay. That's fair. Okay. So does that mean the motion doesn't need to be amended? It still needs to be amended despite the two For the days. seven days? I don't think so. The I mean, the, the language in the finding um, relates to why the 
why the conditional use permit, why you can make that conditional use permit and why it complies with the alcohol ordinance. And, and I don't think it m makes a difference one way or the other if they're open Tuesdays or not open Tuesdays. I mean, the, the main thing is that, as, as Skip pointed out, is that the, the hours of operation and the sale of alcohol are going to be consistent with the um, ABC's restrictions on, on time. So I don't, I don't believe it's required to amend the, the resolution to achieve the, the result I think you want, which is to allow them to sell alcohol any day of the week up until 10 p.m. Okay, with that, Mr. City Attorney, <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to adopt Resolution PC 2020-018, approving CUP 20-003, and find that the project is categorically exempt from environmental review. I'll second that. All right. I have a motion from Commissioner Avery and a second from Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Then let us call for the question. Huh? You have a problem with Restart. Uh -oh. oh. Miguel, you're needed. I already tried to take it. It's just oh, okay. I tried it a couple times. There we go. It's just a trick we play on the new guy. <laughs> <laughs> we just have fun. Really? Yeah. Mine, mine's got Chris. Mine's good. There we go. Let the record reflect that the motion passes with five yes votes. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you very much. And you are now free to go. <laughs> good luck to you. Yes, good luck. And Skip, you are free to go as well. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good evening. All right, bye-bye. All righty, that brings us to item 9C. And this item will be presented by another planner, Justin Sauter. Good evening, Planning Commission. All right, so tonight we have a zoning ordinance amendment and the proposed amendment would modify the standards for amusement arcades and amusement machines in the PNC. There's been a recent influx of arcade uses in Palmville, but not in the traditional arcade where a family may enjoy games such as Pac-Man or air hockey at a pizza parlor. This new type of arcade has machines commonly referred to as fish games, which are sometimes associated with illegal gambling. In an effort to better understand these fish games, staff met with special agents from the Department of Justice. The meeting helped clarify how to recognize fish game machine, how they operate, what constitutes an illegal gambling machine, how to remove them from a business, the severity of the problems that fish games have caused statewide, and finally, policies to prevent amusement arcades from illegal gambling. Three fish game arcades were approved by the Planning Commission prior to the meeting with the DOJ. Since the meeting, the Planning Commission has heard a request for an additional fish game, which brings the total number of requests to four. There are two existing fish game establishments, and CUP 17008 was revoked of April in this year, and a request for a new fish game arcade was denied by the Planning Commission on March 12th of this year. Based on the meeting with the Department of Justice, the Sheriff's recommendation, the revocation and denial of CUPs, it has been determined that fish games are not a beneficial use. Therefore, staff is presenting a policy change to prohibit this type of establishment while still allowing amusement machines and arcades as an accessory use. Arcades have been successful and prevalent in the past, but advances in video game technology allow easy access to a variety of arcade-style games within the home, so there's not as much demand for standalone arcades today. 
The amendment would eliminate standalone arcades, but would not prohibit establishments such as a Chuck E. Cheese or Dave & Buster's to have an arcade. Amusement machines are currently allowed in all of our commercial and industrial zones as an accessory use, provided that no more than four machines are included. The amendment would only allow two amusement machines to be permitted by right. Three or more machines would require the approval of the COP, provided that no more than 10% of the floor area is dedicated to the arcade portion of the business, excluding bona fide restaurants. Bona fide restaurants do not have an area restriction for the arcade portion of the business. Also, games of skill are not currently allowed in bona fide restaurants, but the amendment would update that definition so they would be allowed. The definition of an amusement machine would be reworked to specify that each station or seat of a machine where a player may simultaneously operate the game is considered as an amusement machine. This would mean if four people can play a single game all at the same time, it would be counted as four amusement machines rather than one. Fish games typically seat up to four or eight people at one time and therefore would be considered as either four or eight amusement machines. The amendment would eliminate standalone arcades such as fish games while still allowing amusement machines in establishments such as bona fide restaurants, family entertainment centers, big box retailers, movie theaters, etc. The Planning Commission has three options tonight. Option one is to adopt the resolution recommending that the City Council approve the Zoning Ordinance Amendment and find that the project is exempt from environmental review. Option two is to continue the project. Option three is to deny the project. Option one is recommended. That concludes my presentation, and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Mr. Sauter. Do any of the commissioners have technical questions for staff at this time? Just a comment. I just want to say thank you because <laughs> when, when I first got, I think the first meeting I attended, we approved the uh, fish game that we uh, ultimately uh, revoked their CUP on. And I thought it, I thought it was approving a Chuck E. Cheese for 18-year-olds. I don't know. So, yeah, this is whoever came up with this idea is brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And I may have read it. I'd just like clarity on it. Sure, if you don't mind. So the two that we did approve, um, I think I was on the commission when it happened, but I don't even remember. Um, those are pre-existing. What happens to them now? And once this resolution passed and this amendment is made, what happens to those? Are, are, they, are they taken out of the stores or are they continue to exist? But Their CUPs remain um, unless further action is requested on those. But this does not change the status of those CUPs. Okay, so they, they remain as they are. Correct. Thanks. Okay. On the, um, you're referring to a zoning ordinance change as a project? Or is there a particular project attached to the zoning ordinance? This is by itself just the zoning ordinance amendment, just changing the language within the Palm Bill Municipal Code for the clarifications on um, the items that Mr. Sauter discussed. So there's no project associated with this change. So then is a zoning ordinance amendment considered a project? Technically, yes. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> okay. If there are no further technical questions for staff, I would like to open the public hearing on this item. Ms. Saxton, were there any e-comments on this one? There were not. <sighs> wow, we do not have a large following, do we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I shall close the public hearing on this if there are no objections. Then the public hearing is closed. Commissioner discussion. This was a very complicated um, issue to try to address. And... Um, this is like new territory that we were just kind of st stumbled in front of us that we found out about. Did you consult with like Department of Justice or other jurisdictions to find out, well, what is the, what is the resolution to not all of a sudden have this crazy stuff take over our city? We, we did meet with the Department of Justice and we talked about several things and one of them was like, well, how can we, how can we stop these from even opening? 
Um, and so this is kind of one of the outcomes of that. Some ideas were thrown around in that meeting, and I think some ideas were already in the works, but that meeting really helped spur this on. Because you'd think, you know, this is happening all over the place. And you'd think that we shouldn't have to reinvent the wheel every time. It'd be great if all the cities talked to each other and said, hey, we had that problem too, and here's what we did. And the Department of Justice also sharing with everybody. So, hey, here's the here's how you, you know, make this stuff work properly. Okay. Sounds like you guys... Yeah, I, I do believe no. when we use the words, um, when we say things are reasonable and beneficial, I think this is clearly a reasonable and beneficial um, amendment because we are starting to see some of the issues involved with this on a, on a real personal level here. And like Bart said, and I remember I remember Jesse, when, you, when we approved one of them, you were like, an arcade, cool! <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like have the video shot. If you like. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, and I remember thinking, oh, this is so neat, and and we're seeing that they're not so neat. So um, I, I think this does give us a little bit of teeth to, to hopefully prevent more of these from coming to our community, at least. So I do truly do believe it is um, reasonable, desirous, and beneficial. And exempt from CEQA, but that's just my thought. <laughs> so, if there are no further comments, would somebody like to make a motion on this? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number PC2020-019. Recommending that the City Council approve uh, GLA 20-002 and find that the project is exempt from environmental review. All right, I have a motion from Commissioner Smith. I'll second. I have a second from Commissioner Avery. Although my computer doesn't know it yet. Okay, and so we have a motion. Any discussion on the motion? All right, then let's call for the question. Let the record reflect that the motion passes with five yes votes. Congratulations, Mr. Sar. Now you get to go present that to the city council. So. <laughs> All right. That will bring us to item 10, staff yeah, communications. Okay. And actually, Carrie, if you cannot leave just yet. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, so um, I... I'm sure all of you saw that last week was public service week. And so on behalf of the city manager, city council, myself, our whole department, um, and just really the whole city, we wanted to say thank you for your service and just being a part of this city. It's um, a lot of work that all of you do and um, a lot of time, and we really appreciate it. So thank you. Also, uh, next week is Public Works Week, so just bringing on all the celebrations. Um, so we're really excited to celebrate our Public Works staff. Um, as you can see here, they are extremely creative, and we're able to make all of us safe and be able to, you know, be up here in our normal fashion. So, you know, they're a pretty awesome crew. Also, I feel that Miss uh, Nardi Lopez, as well as our state, our city, would. Uh, be angry at me if I didn't mention that the 2020 census is going on right now. So um, I can tell the community as well as our planning commissioners to really try to get our count up. It's really important. There's a lot of things that go into that that help our city, including school lunches and things like that. So, um, you know, be great advertisers for that if you can. We, uh, moving right into June, our staff continues to be very full and uh, have a lot going on. We actually have eight items that will be before you. See. And I have to tell you, we have five, <laughs> items. Eight items. five 
find environmental documents that are out for circulation right now. So it is going to perhaps be your largest packet that you will have seen um, in quite some time, even larger than last month. So um, get ready for that. So thank you again for your service. By the way, this goes over way better if you bring us cookies, I'm just saying. So. Okay, any other comments from staff? No, not tonight. You just talked stay, enough tonight. Just stay safe. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. That brings us to Planning Commission communications. Um, first off, I would like to welcome Commissioner Fragasanes um, to our fun little group here. Um, you, you came in on an interesting, good, strong meeting. So. Right into the hot water. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and also, I did the reason, Carrie, that I asked you not to leave in tying into the zoning ordinance amendment. I would like to request if staff can take a look at the follow through of the CUPs of the existing fish game uh, businesses and see how they are following on there. I'm sure you're probably already on that, but yes. um, you can blame me if they ask why you're doing it. Um, and also I had a question about, there's a cell tower we approved that's supposedly a flagpole um, over on Palmdale Boulevard, and I do not have the CUP number on that, but it is simply a pole with no flag on it every time I drive by it. So if somebody could look into that, I would appreciate it. It's on Palmdale Boulevard across from the hospital, um, your furniture store, uh, and it's just this big old pole. And that's what we were trying to avoid in asking them to do a thing. So those are just a couple of thoughts in my head. But, um, thank you. Matt, Madam Chair, if I may, just to go over for the benefit of the Planning Commission, the, the process to review a conditional use permit for one of those arcades. Yes. So it's a, it's a two-step process. Um, staff will, will look into it, and then at a future meeting, maybe not at the next meeting with eight items on the agenda, but <laughs> maybe sometime after that, um, they'll bring forward a report, and the Planning Commission will determine whether or not there's sufficient evidence to have a full hearing with regard to the conditional use permit. Okay, thank that you. That would come back at a, a second meeting, uh, and, and then the Planning Commission would have a full hearing, and they could determine whether or not the CUP is in compliance, whether amendments to the conditions are necessary to make it in compliance, or if there's no hope for it and the conditional use permit must be revoked. So I don't know if, and if anyone has any questions on that process, I'm certainly will here to answer them. All right, thank you very much. Okay, any other planning commission communications? Just one thing I wanted to inquire. I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, that today is JJ's birthday, city manager's birthday. Is that correct? Oh. That is correct. That is one of the reasons why he is not here this evening. Because he's at home watching us. <laughs> happy birthday, JJ. Happy birthday, JJ. <laughs> <laughs> I have permission. Happy birthday. You know he is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. Good call. Thank you, Jesse. All right, then if there is no further communication, I will adjourn our meeting to Thursday, June 11th at 7 o'clock. I should hit this side this time. <laughs> there.